Chairman, uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary and General, for your service. I want to follow up on the exchange you had with Representative Speer. And I understand your position is that the 2001 AUMF gives us the authority to fight ISIS and that we're there to protect the oil because we don't want ISIS to get it. I disagree with that theory, but I want to bracket that and see if you would at least acknowledge that we don't have the authority to do what the President is calling for. President Trump on October 27th stated clearly, we are leaving soldiers to secure the oil. Now we may have to fight for the oil. That's okay. Maybe somebody else wants the oil, in which case they have a hell of a fight. It can help us because we should be able to take some also. And what I intend to do, perhaps, is make a deal with ExxonMobil, one of our great companies. Would you acknowledge that this Congress has not authorized any way, in any way the United States to go in and steal Syrian oil and make money off of it? I'm not aware of the Congress granting any authority al along those lines. I'm also unaware of what inherent authorities the President does or does not have in this regard. I'm, I'm focused on the military task of denying ISIS access to the oil. Can you assure us at this point that there are no plans for us to try to take the oil and sell the oil? I, I, all I can tell you is I'm not aware of any plans right now. The second question I have is regarding the bombshell Washington Post report on the Afghan papers. I imagine you read that. Uh, the bottom line is that top military officials and civilian officials have known that the Afghan war has been unwinnable and have been misleading the American public for 20 years. Your predecessor, Secretary Rumsfeld, is quoted there as saying, I have no visibility into who the bad guys are. Are you embarrassed by Secretary Rumsfeld's comments? and the other people quoted, and do you believe they owe the American public an explanation and an apology? Congressman, I'm, I haven't read all the stories, frankly, and so before I comment on what Secretary Rumsfeld purportedly said or didn't say, I'd want to read all that and understand it and actually talk to him. But uh, I do know this much. Uh, the story spanned uh, uh, multiple administrations. Certainly. Uh, multiple uniform and civilian officials, and I think it's good to look back. I, I think at this point, where I'm looking is Ford, and Ford tells me is the path to success, the win, is a political agreement between the parties on the ground. But don't you think we have to have some accountability so we don't make the mistake again? Would you support this committee holding hearings on the Afghan papers and calling in front of Congress every official who has misled the American public about whether this war was winnable and all? or not, with 2,400 American soldiers dead, 775,000 Americans deployed, don't you think people owe this country an explanation? Sure, many of those dead are my friends, and maybe some of my former soldiers. Uh, but look, it's, uh, the, it's the committee's responsibility to determine what it has hearings on. I don't think you want the executive branch making that call. Mr. Chairman, I would request that this committee hold hearings on the Afghan papers and call before Congress with subpoena every person who has misled this country and just like in the Pentagon if, Papers, I think uh, that should be one of our highest priorities in is examining what has come out in that bombshell report. If I may, Mr. Conner, we'll pause your time for the moment. I, I think it's appropriate to have hearings. I will tell you right up front, just to set expectations correctly, I'm not going to call every single witness who has anything to do with this. I do not believe that would be a productive use of the committee's time. Uh, I do think it's something that we should take a look at um, and, and get explanations from, because I agree with the overall point. But I don't want to set unrealistic expectations about how the committee should approach it. So I, I respect your question. I, I respect that, and certainly at least having some of the prominent people come and explain to the American public. My final question uh, concerns uh, Yemen, and uh, I appreciate that the administration has voluntarily suspended the refueling of the planes, but we've had a situation, of course, now our own basis in Representative Gates' district, we have Saudi nationals who are being trained and are attacking Americans. And the question, I guess, that the American public is asking is, why in the world would we be providing the Saudi Air Force with any possible logistical help to conduct bombing in Yemen when 10 million civilians possibly face famine? So, Congressman, we're, we're not providing the Saudis logistical help uh, with regard to their activities in Yemen. We are providing Saudis and 152 other countries training in the United States. Why? Because we, we have a distinct advantage over Russia and China who don't have allies and partners. And I think it's important that we continue these programs so that we have a broad network. That's what ensures but, our but security. Could you commit that we won't help the Saudi Air Force 
to either logistically or in maintenance uh, to do anything in terms of their bombing in Yemen? Well, I, I, you, you can define help pretty broadly, right? We probably train Saudi personnel to do maintenance here in the United States. I don't know. but can we, can we stop doing any maintenance of the Saudi aircrafts in Saudi Arabia and help and, and not have any of our men and women assist the Saudis in their mission into Yemen? I, I just, I'd have to get you, I'd have to come back with you and let you know what we are or are not doing with regard to the Saudis and what the impact would be on not just the Saudis, because keep in mind, th those same Saudi aircraft might be the same Saudi aircraft we call upon to help us blunt an Iranian assault uh, in order to, or, or help us respond to an Iranian attack. So you've got to be thoughtful in terms of how we think through what actions we take or don't take.